I'd like to welcome everybody back to another edition of HVAC for Beginners. My name is Chris. I am your HVAC instructor for these videos. Today we're going to go over the gas furnace and the air handler, which is electric heat. And as we get into it, we're going to go over the aspects of different makers. Also, we're going to go into firm detail on the inner components of the gas furnace, what it does, its operation, and the compliance in which it needs to make sure that you're running one safely. Now, I do want to recommend something. If you do own a gas furnace in your home, and most homes, you know, if you uh, have one built, it's actually by city code. But if you have an older home or if you don't ha have one, make sure you have a carbon monoxide detector in your home. I would suggest that you get at least three of them. Make sure you spread them out through the house, close, you know, in the proximity where your gas furnace is. No matter if it's up in the attic or down as an upflow unit, make sure you have them. Remember, carbon monoxide is undetectable. It's odorless. By the time you run into a situation with a headache and you feel tired, you're running into danger with your life. So make sure you do have a carbon monoxide detector installed in your home if you have any type of gas uh, appliances in your home. When we get into this one here, we're also going to go over a little bit of the air handler, but not in big detail because this will be part one of gas furnace. The next one will be part two of the electric air handler and its internal parts and how it operates. Both of them are totally two different dinosaurs and they run totally different and the voltage uh, that they both have are totally different. So it's a big importance. There's a big difference. They are two different dinosaurs altogether. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get in to this gas furnace and get into the components so that we can get you learning and understanding of your gas furnace. Okay, well, let's go ahead and get into the fundamentals of your gas furnace. Let's kind of go over the details about a gas furnace, its components, kind of what it does, and a breakdown. The gas furnace is a common type of heating system used in homes. Its primary function is to generate heat by burning natural gas or propane and then distribute that heat throughout the house to maintain a comfort indoor temperature. And here are the main functions of a gas furnace for a home. So let me come to conclusion. If you own a home or you're at a location where you're running propane and you'll see some areas where they might have a tank and it says propane flammable if that is what you have make sure the company you're working with and they should know this that the needle and seed in that gas valve have to be changed out so that it can be appropriate for propane propane and natural gas are two different elements two different types of gases one is heavier than the other one has a flammable rate a little stronger than the other. So you're going to have to change out the needle and seat in that gas valve so that it can accommodate for propane. But if you have natural gas like you are in the city and then a natural gas tank out in the country and stuff like that, it is already appropriated with the needle and seat in it so you don't have to do any changes. But make sure if you do want to run on propane for any reason that it is accommodated for that type of, of fuel that's operating your gas furnace. Combustion. The gas furnace contains burner that ignites and burns the natural gas and or propane fuel. The combustion process takes place within the combustion chamber. You know, you'll go look at them. They have heat exchangers. So down below you have your rails. You'll see the flames come up across it while it's operating. And then it heats the heat exchangers and, it, and then it levelates your heat so that it actually rises. And then your blower wheel will engage and actually push the heat with that within your house and actually run it through your supply line and then comes out to the supply banks in your home. The heat exchanger is the combustion gas produced by the burner passed through the heat exchanger. The heat exchanger is a metal component that absorbs the heat from the combustion gases and transfers it through around in the surrounding air. The blower in it, the furnace has a blower or a fan that forces air over the heat exchanger. The heated air absorbs the warmth from the heat exchanger and becomes hot air. Air distribution. The blower pushes the hot air through a network of ducts, which are usually installed in the walls, floors, or ceilings of your home. The ducts distribute the heat air, basically your heated air, 
to different rooms or zones within your home. So if you live in a mobile home, some mobile homes back in the day and even to this day, the supply vents and, and return areas are coming up off the floor. Now, if it's in the hallway, you'll see the return air that pulls by the gas furnace, usually down the hallway somewhere, and you'll see where they come from. And nowadays, they are being prefabbed homes where they're actually putting the ductwork in the ceiling. So it kind of represents uh, a standard pre-built home, but it's still a, a mobile home that you can move around. Now, here's something that's important. Air filtration. Gas furnaces often include air filters that remove dust, allergens, and other particles from the air before it is heated and circulated. This helps improve indoor air quality by reducing airborne pollutants. Let me be really clear with you homeowners out there. I don't care if it's a five inch filter that's good for six months or it's a standard one inch filter that you change every 30 days. If you have a home that produces a lot of dust or your home isn't tight, it's a loose fit home, might be an older home, where you have air leaks, you know, you can do a combustion test to your home where they seal the front door and they'll run smoke into it and it'll tell you where all the leaks are coming from your home and it can tell you how it affects your heat load in your house as well. But if you have a home that you notice gets air drafts or you feel cool air coming from under those areas, that also introduces dust and dirt into your home. So I would recommend if you have a one inch filter about every 10 to 15 days, Make sure you pull it and check it. If it is extremely dirty, go ahead and change your filter. Don't wait to the 30-day mark for your filters because if that filter gets too clogged up, I've seen filters so clogged up that it would pull itself up into the blower assembly and then the assembly and the squirrel cage are just totally destroyed and then it costs that customer a whole lot of money to replace that where a $5 or a $10 filter would have saved you a lot of headache. If you run a pleated filter, same thing, still check it. Uh, hog's hair, if you're running one of those, please find a way to get out of running hog's hair. They're not that great. They're, they let a lot of dirt and particles in your home, and they're just uh, an old school method that was used back in the day. If you run a like a Honeywell 5-inch filter where they're like three and six months, make sure you check in between the, the clevets of that filter and make sure that it's not collecting or pulling dust down. That means that filter is starting to deplete and the more air pull that you get up there, if that blower wheel has to pull more air, it's going to increase your power wattage up. You're going to notice your electric bill climb too because it's going to increase your amperage. And you don't want to do that. I have seen where they've actually gotten so clogged up that it would overamp the blower assembly and cause the blower wheel to either burn out or go into thermal overload and shut down. Um, Thermostatic controls. The gas furnace is typically connected to a thermostat, and that's your thermostat that's on the wall, guys, which allows you to set and control the desired temperature in your home. When the temperature drops below the set point, the thermostat sends a signal to the furnace to start heating. And just to let you know, there are different types of uh, thermostats out there on the market that you can get. You can get digital ones that are designed for straight cool or heat pump. You can get ones that are designed for one single stage or two stage heating and cooling. Uh, there's such a wide market. Just make sure you get one. If you want that's programmable, you want to set your limits on it. So you want to raise the temperature uh, of your air while you're gone at work to save on your power or you want to lower your heat. Get you one that's programmable and allows you to do that. Make sure that you use a level on it. Make sure it's level on your wall. Uh, you know, even though it does have a standard circuit board in it, it doesn't have a mercury in it or a mercury bulb anymore. It just makes the aesthetics look a lot better. Safety features. Gas furnaces are equipped with various safety features to ensure safety operation. This may include like a flame sensor, pressure switches, limit switches that monitor the burn, flame, gas supply, and system operations. Shutting down the furnace if any issues are detected. Uh, limit switches are set to a certain temperature. I'll give you an example. Say your blower motor goes out and the furnace is still running. If it doesn't pick up that it has a problem on the control board or the control board isn't designed to pick up a, a blower wheel dropping out, 
the limit switch will pick up and it will actually run the heat across it. You'll see one just above the burners. And if it goes up that, it'll kill the power. It actually has a biometallic plate in there and it'll pop it. And it'll open it up and it will kill the control circuit and shut the gas valve off. So that you won't burn down your home. Uh, with the other one saying pressure switches, same thing. Anything happens, there's a pressure valve on it. If it has any changes, it, it'll limit the operation of your gas furnace. If you get to the point that you don't know what's really going on by doing simple tests on it, go ahead and call a certified HVAC technician to come out and he can run tests on it and go a little further and kind of let you know what's going on. It's going to take you a little time to get an understanding of how your gas furnace works. Ventilation. The combustion process produces bioproducts such as carbon monoxide and other gases that need to be safely vented outside. Gas furnaces utilize a venting system such as chimneys, PVC pipes to remove the combustion byproducts from the home. So it has an inducer motor on it. And when you fire up your gas furnace at when it calls for heat, you'll hear the inducer motor kick on and it actually pulls and pushes that up through your vent stack. Now, it's a double most of the time it's a double wall vented stack made of galvanized steel. It will they will drill them in to set them and then they run silver tape around them to keep them from leaking and it runs up through your roof. Uh, some run on PVC. Uh, I don't particularly care for those kind, but they do run on PVC and will vent out the same way. Basically, you want to get that carbon monoxide out of your home. So any excess carbon monoxide buildup, the inducer motor will remove it. Overall, your gas furnace main function is to convert gas fuel into heat and distribute the heat throughout the home, providing warmth comfort during the colder months. Uh, Another thing on hand I want to let you know is all gas furnaces are 120 volts, guys. Uh, I've seen some that were 220, not too often, usually in the uh, commercial field when it's running two states heat and cool. But, you know, you have 120 feed. Electric has 220 feed. So let's kind of take a look at a few of what a gas furnace looks like and an air handler, and we can kind of go over some concepts with it as well. These are your different types of indoor units. On the left hand side, you'll see Goodman and Bryant. Those are your typical gas furnaces. If you notice, the one on the bottom that says Bryant, that is a carrier product. Carrier makes pain, day and night, Bryant, and then their, their name brand carrier. This one has a vented area where it allows air to kind of come in there. And on top where you see the opening, you'll see a full back back air. That's where your evaporator cool will set. Most gas furnaces, your evaporator cool sits on top of the gas furnace. Uh, air handlers are a little different. Now, if you look at the good one, you'll notice that the good one is a little more sealed. And if you notice on the top, there are two ventilated stack systems on it. So it has a dual ventilated stack unit on it. And it pulls. It's called a push-pull system. On the right-hand side... These are your air handlers. The top one is made by Train. The bottom one is an off-brand. It's called Duquesne. They're pretty well known in the West Coast area. But the reason why I picked the Duquesne, it kind of gives you an open view of what it looks like. When you look at the Duquesne model, you'll notice that it has a slab coil at the bottom. Your evaporator coil is a, uh, is a tilted slab. And it basically, the pan is over in the right-hand corner. And you'll notice that you have your suction and liquid line uh, sweat in points for your copper line on the bottom. The blower assembly is a pull. It is not a push type. It is a pull type. And then above that, you'll have your electric heat, your heat assembly, and your control devices, your circuit board down below. The top one uh, is, is in the same format. Except the evaporator is, on this one, it's going to be an A-style cool. It's going to be right in the middle, so the blower assembly is down below, and all your KW heat strips or your electric heat is on the top part of that one. So that's kind of the difference. The reason why you call it air handler is because it's electric heat, and it, it is different from a gas furnace. Uh, the operations on them are different. All electric heat, 220 feet to a 230 setup. 120 over here and then it depends on 
uh, what size tonnage you're going to need to know what rating of gas furnace you're going to need for your home. And we will go into detail on that uh, in part two of gas furnace. So I made a little diagram here. I took a picture of a unit, kind of did a little breakdown. The camera didn't take the greatest picture. I was kind of disappointed, but it's enough to go through this one. Up on the top corner where it says blower capacitor and blower assembly, that is what we call your squirrel cage. That's the assembly where your blower motor is. And of course, the capacitor is the operation, the capacitance for that blower uh, motor itself. Inside that is your squirrel cage, your blower wheel, which is a vented wheel that spins and pushes air. It houses your blower motor and it has little mounts on it, little rubber mounts to engage and kind of absorb vibration. Just below that on the right hand side is a 120 volt by 24 volt transformer. So let me explain. It's 124 volts that feeds it but it transforms only 24 volts out on the feed side. So in 120 volts out, 24 volts goes into your control board and operates all your control circuits. That means it operates, you, you know, the thermostat, your outdoor unit. It tells what you, your system's going to do. It's basically what they call your control circuit. Uh, anything low voltage or 24 volt is control. That means your thermostat, your brain, with it having a feed, that means it feeds back. It gets feedback to the power source uh, to your thermostat and allows your thermostat to operate the system properly. Of course, there's your control board on the gas furnace in the left-hand corner. You can see where the 24-volt control wire is connected and is set up. Down below, you can notice that you see the larger wires. If you notice the red, yellow, and black on your right-hand side, those are the wires from your blower assembly or your blower motor and that's where your control wires go there for that assembly right here in the middle it says door safety switch little black wires that run over this will kill the 120 volts that runs this every time you pull that door off it's a safety factor and it kills the power to the system when you pull that door off the pressure changes in there change and it doesn't operate properly if it's like that, I'll give you an example. If I'm working on a rooftop unit on top of a roof and I have my gauges hooked up to the, the uh, scroll compressor, if I don't put that door panel back up in there, I'm not going to get the proper readings and pressures that come across on the suction and high side of my gauges. That's so important. Over on the right hand side, it says vacuum pressure switch. That is a pressure switch that actually feeds or reads vacuum and actually keeps itself open and allows for a circuit. If something goes wrong, that can actually kill the system. Your gas combustion blower assembly or your inducer motor, as some people call it, uh, it assembles the blower assembly and the motor and it operates by removing, you know, excessive carbon monoxide out of the system. Just pulls it out and blows it out you want it out of the system. That's why you'll see the vent tube on it, which is, like I said, double pane galvanized steel so that it can, you know, uh, absorb and maintain heat so it doesn't get too hot and it can get the heat out. So let's go over the internal parts of your gas furnace and kind of get a breakdown. This is a little bit more simplified. We'll start from the top and work our way down. You have a vacuum pressure switch. That pressure switch, if you notice a little gray tube runs over to the inducer motor, it picks up that vacuum and then it pulls on the diaphragm and it actually lets the vacuum pressure switch to operate. You have your pressure hose, which I was telling you about, which goes to the inducer side of it. You have your inducer motor, and that's the one that you'll hear. When you first start up, like I said, on that gas furnace, that's the first thing you should hear. Start clicking. You hear a click and you'll hear that thing kick on. And then you'll hear your gas valve feed, you'll hear your burners, and then the lower section of it, the final will be your blower assembly. Over on top is your limit switch. You'll see a little arrow marked right there in the middle, and it has a little red dot at it. That's the limit switch. Remember I told you, just above where the, the burning rails, the manifold and your burners. And it's there for that very reason. If it gets too hot, it can kick that gas valve off, and then it will shut the system down, and then it'll send a type of circuit over to your control board. A lot of times they have codes in them. It'll flash and it'll let us know that, hey, 
you know, excessive heat, whatever the readings it's going to give, depending on the company who makes it. Over the left is your gas line. You'll see it coming in, going right over to the gas valve. And let me be real clear. Most city codes require you to have galvanized pipe at least two inches out on the outside of the casing of your furnace. You cannot have a flex hose running on the inside of that and then a little P-trap and connecting. The reason why is if that gas hose for any reason gets a vibration, it can actually cut a hole in that flex line and now you have natural gas leaking in your, to your home and you'll have a problem. I have physically run into that four times in 28 years of doing this and I've actually had to go in there and these people are actually standing in their home and when I open the door, I get hit with natural gas in my face that would knock a rhino down and they're standing there breathing it in. I've had to evacuate them and actually get the fire department to come out and ventilate the home because if there's any kind of spark in the system, you know, I actually had to go shut the main power down to the home so there was no ignition source to blow that house off its foundation. And I've had to do that four different times. So that is city code. Make sure when you look at yours that you do have pipe running all the way out that extends outside the casing of your gas furnace. You have your power in. Right there on the right-hand side shows your power in. There's a little cover plate that will surround that. But you can see the red uh, wire tabs or the caps that are on there that are tightened on there that actually connect uh, the power source feeding into the power source to the gas furnace itself. Over in the middle is your gas valve unit. That is your gas valve. That's what has the regulation and allows natural gas to come into your burners and into the manifold and allows you to have a natural gas burn. Uh, you can go down here on the bottom where that clip is and you can do a test this plug for power to valve. You should be receiving power to that valve. A flame sensor. Now, back in the day, before flame sensors came along, we had what was called a thermocouple. And what a thermocouple was is it had a little sensor on it and then a small little burner that connected all the way over to your gas valve. And you would push on the gas valve and go to a set and you would light that little burner, let it run for, you know, 10 seconds or so, and then turn it over to maintain a steady small amount of gas to the pilot assembly that's on it. And that's how older natural gas burners run was, was on that type of setup. Nowadays, we run a igniter, which actually, as when you call for heat, it'll ignite it. It'll light up and glow real red. And then the flame, you'll hear the gas come across it. The gas will burn across there. The igniter will kick off the flame sensor now. It's picking up the heat coming across it. It takes that heat, transfer it to electricity, sends it over, and keeps that gas valve open until the home is satisfied. You do have your manifold. That is the rail. If you notice, it is that manifold is connected to the gas valve, and then your feed line comes into the other side. So on the left side is the feed line. On the right side is the feed line out. It goes to the manifold, and then you have those burners. There is something that needs to be done with these setups. You'll get breakdowns from the heat exchanger over time, and it'll dump metal debris and particles on top of those, and they can inhibit your burners from flaming right. So every once in a while when it's kicked on, you can pull the panel door off and make sure that it's still running, and you can kind of look in there and keep your face a distance away. Don't just stick your face up in there and get yourself burned. Make sure your rails are running all the way across nice and smooth. A lot of them you know, basically will have a turbo burn where you'll see four little flames running or you'll have a rail where it's several little bitty flames all running in a sequence of an event and several different rails. This one has four of them and then they will burn. This one does have a door switch on it like I was telling you. So when you take the door off, that safety switch is going to engage and it's going to cut it out. So you'll have to hold the door switch in to do any maintenance work on it to make sure that it's working. Let me be clear. When dealing with gas furnaces, if it's your first time or you're not sure, I would recommend you getting a service technician coming out there and you can stand off behind him 
watch him do his work and kind of learn a little bit. Don't be an amateur and go in there and start messing with this and then you cause a problem or you do something that can inhibit or damage your gas unit and you can have a gas leak or, or anything or you can cause it to be inoperable. This is a learning process to learn about your gas furnace and how it operates. Make sure when you're dealing with gas furnaces that you inspect for rodents, rats, and debris. Uh, rats can chew through galvanized steel and through cast iron as fast as you can spit water. They, their teeth are something else. If you ever talk to somebody on YouTube about rats in the New York City in the sewer system, they will chew holes and, and iron in, in a heartbeat. It doesn't take them long. And they can do the same thing with galvanized steel without a problem. They also eat through your insulation on your ductwork because everything is flex duct. So make sure you periodically inspect all around your gas furnace. If you see rat droppings, you have a rat problem and you need to make sure that you get uh, somebody out there to inhibit and get rid of those rats quickly. If it's a small deal, you can set out rat traps with peanut butter and see if you catch a few. And if you do catch one, then you can get an exterminator out there and get rid of those things as quick as you possibly can. But make sure you maintain maintenance on this. If you decide that you want a professional HVAC company to come out, make sure you get a replica one. They'll come out, take a look, and do maintenance on it. If they need to pull the rails and clean it, they will let you know. If they know what they're doing, they're going to do that. Most companies do, but you'll run into situations that some companies do not. I have seen that many, many times. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed going over the gas furnace. We will go over part two and kind of go over the breakdown of what these individual components actually do for the system. Some are real simple, some are kind of complex, but they all work together as a function for your operating system on your gas furnace. We will see you on the next video. This is Chris with HVAC for Beginners. Until next